What does it take to get beyond the damage of words? I'm Katrina Collier. Join me each week as I explore what it takes to step into a happier future. My guests are sharing their stories of when they realized that they needed help and what it took to take that first step so that you leave inspired and maybe even start on your own path to self-love, care, compassion, and of course, happiness. So without further ado, let's hear their stories. Kim Lockenberg, welcome to Beyond the Damage of Words podcast. Thank so you. Thank to you. see your face. Because we haven't spoken in a couple of years, which is shocking. Well, How well, a couple of, a couple is a little bit. A little bit a too much, but at least How at least a year. I don't know. COVID was done. COVID was what done. Happened? We talked a lot during COVID. Yes, because you were in my mastermind. Thank you. That saved me. What a horrid time. I don't want to think back to not the, no. you being the mastermind. I'm in the tweets. <laughs> They've just been right on a roller coaster. Anyway, exactly. tell me, we launched straight in on this podcast. What What happened? How did you end up seeking help? What prompted you to get some help and what did you do? And Spill the beans. Basically. Well, where do I start? No, so so I no Back because nineteen seventy. No, <laughs> well, that was actually well around that point I was born. No, so <laughs> actually the first time I ran into, uh, I was actually sent by my my specialist. So I had cancer as a child. I was two, mm-hmm. um, and it was a very rare form of children's cancer. So mm-hmm. I had it at my um, private parts. Let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was in purity, like 16, 17, I was completely all over the place. And um, my specialist wow. in the hospital, my oncologist said, like, this is not good. You're, you, you survived. There's nothing going on with you. Just you need to figure out how this is your life. And um, I felt really guilty that I survived and other kids didn't and I was healthy. Ah. So I went, that was That's my first. to carry as a toddler. That, yes. So that, when I yeah, when I was seventeen, I went to a psychologist who was specialized in children with cancer. So that actually gave me a place where I was like, it's okay that I survived. It's okay yeah. to. But I can tell you, the response from my friends was like, "You're going to a psychologist? You're not crazy." That is stigma. Why would Why would you go to a psychologist? You're seventeen. There's nothing wrong with you. And I was like. Because I was really open about it. Like, I have to go to Amsterdam, which is about a two-hour train ride every week to speak to yeah. this woman. So that was actually my first time. And, well. Interesting, I- that stigma, isn't it? I had um, Matt Jessup's been on talking about that same thing. But you're not crazy. It's like, well, I didn't say I was. I just don't no. feel great. I want to feel better. Something's wrong. I want to feel right. Like Exactly. I was, I was running into walls. And... Um, so it gave me a really good insight what my life had been up so far. But, well, you know me quite well. So I was very strict, like, okay, so I'm going to this therapist. And after about two years, I was like, yeah, we're done. I'm like, now I'm safe for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm going to be happy for the rest of my life. <laughs> what was that it was like, That was a though? big bummer. That was a big bummer to find yeah, out. Yeah, when you realized, actually, no, damn it, I've got to go back occasionally. <laughs> <But> what was it? <laughs> <laughs> they better continue as we get in our way to help us. But what was it like at 17? Like that, did you feel like scared to open up or actually you were quite confident to talk to this person? Or Well, for me, it was actually, it was eye-opening because it was someone who actually knew people who were in the same situation as me. I, I, I never talked to someone who was a survivor, which is the, the, the name in yeah. the Netherlands for, for, for children who survived uh, cancer. And so it was, it was like coming home. Like it was okay to be sad about it. It was okay to be scared. Um, And I already knew that I was a bit different because when I was going to school, the first few years um, in primary school, I had to go back to the hospital every other few months and then every other year and every, so I was always, but lucky for me, my parents were really open about it. So Mm. everybody, who knows me from when I was young knew I had cancer. So there was no stigma around it in our village yeah. or in our town or so. Which is so good. Cause that, that tendency to clam up and hide it and not, 
And actually, even at that time, because we're similar ages, aren't we, as well, there was a lot exactly. more climbing I, up than there I is was, now. I was diagnosed in 75, so my, my parents yeah. actually lost 60% of their friends because of me, which was like, yeah, because it was the big They obviously well, the big, weren't friends. No, because, uh, it. well, I don't know how you say it in English, but in, in Dutch, it's the grote K, so the big C, it would be the in English. C, yeah. So, but I, I only found oh out that, that 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 was happening in, in that time and age when I was about 15. Because yeah. for us, it was all normal. Mm. Everybody, even my, my brothers still had their friends over in our house, even though I was on chemo. So at the, yeah. in that sense, we already opened up to That's other amazing. people that it's okay yeah. to be ill or that it's okay mm. to go t- through therapy. Yeah. My mom, my mom actually went, started to do therapy herself, different kinds of therapy yeah, and turned into a therapist when I was seven. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, isn't it? So maybe yeah. that's what inspired her in. And so if you hadn't had it, she wouldn't have found her calling because she loves it, doesn't she? She loves it. So. I mean, she's, she just turned 84 in December and she's still oh, practicing. Wow. She's still oh. practicing. Not, not like commercially anymore, but she still has about like six clients and some of them already for over 40 years. Yeah. And and you kind of like, you don't have to retire when you do something like that. I have no plans on retiring. I'm gonna if you're enjoying what you do, having finished, like yeah, no, living to the end. <laughs> if you enjoy what you're doing, why would yeah. you? Why would why you? Why would you retire? You're helping people. It's quite exactly. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So, if I can bring up something you said before you came on, because I just think this is really interesting as well. Through that, so as open as they were, though, we we had a conversation about. You, your brothers got to be brothers and you got to be a girl. Oh, yeah, definitely. If I would go to my dad's, my parents yeah. divorced when, well, split up when I was about six. Oh, if gosh, I would wow. visit my dad, oh, it was the best decision they ever made. Seriously. I know, but still, still a lot of change in your childhood. In oh, those yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no, they've it's... obviously done a great job of communicating openly with you, but still a lot of change. Yeah, so I was in hospital for over a year. Then I came back, and then within two, three years, they split up. But getting back to the story, so yeah, yeah, yeah. When I would visit my dad over the weekends, I had to wear a skirt or a dress. Not for my mom. My mom is like, "Hey, dress however you want to," but your dad demands you're wearing a dress or a skirt. That's so funny. I just looked at a photo of me from the seventies. It happens to be sitting here and just saying, "What am I wearing? I'm wearing trousers." <laughs> On the other hand, on the other <laughs> hand, though, on the other hand, my dad is ninety. Well, he's he's yeah, no, but my up. dad passed in early twenty twenty two at ninety two. So yeah, so similar, I, similar, but still, dad wouldn't have made me wear skirts. Oh yeah, my dad was very old fashioned. Well, oh, oh, yeah, he, well, he still is. But he hates my short hair. <laughs> well, my dad hardly recognizes me, so it's like it's like where's Kimi here? Like. I'm here. Uh, oh yeah, you are, you are. And then he's like, oh, he's crying that I'm there. But um, um no, but anyway, no, but it's so, yeah, no, so, so he's he was very so how did typical. it feel when you were having to wear a skirt and you're having to wear like be a girl? I mean, you're like me, you're a bit of a tomboy, aren't you? So what was it like that? So it was just the system. So I was just following the system because and 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 this is yeah, so. I grew up in a hospital. I mean, I was two years old when I came in and I was in that period of time. I was at home quite often, but not all the time. So, and in hospitals, there's there's a, a structure. So it's in the morning, you go to your bath, then you get your medication, then you go to bed. It's not that I, that I um, remember everything, but I remember like spots and blood. Structures. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I can still draw at the hospital and blah, 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 blah. I but, bet so if you for smelt, me, I follow the, um, the oh, smell, I, you'd be yeah. straight back there. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. and I and so I love the smell of hospitals. It's oh, really... you must have been very nurtured there then. <laughs> yeah, and I still well, I, in in a month I go back to the hospital for some checkups, but I love it there. Then my husband doesn't like hospitals that much, but he goes with me, and he's like, I don't understand why you like this. Like, well, it's kind of my second home. Yeah. Makes but sense. so for me, that that was just structured how it was. And when I was with my mom, I could wear whatever I had. I was uh, Pippi Langstrom all the time. I went to, to to school with like my ponytails like this. 
So how did that impact your identity then? If you Well, to be funny and fair, I didn't think it impacted my life as much as the past year. So mm-hmm. the past year and lucky for us, it's it's more and more normal to talk about your mental health or mm. um what you're going through or how you feel. Yeah. And yeah, as with my mom, I was her um test bunny for a lot of years but um no mm. so so i'm quite spiritual and i was like yeah i don't know something's going on and yeah. what i found out now is that i was so structured in social mm-hmm. acknowledgement like like this is how everybody expecting me to act expecting me to wear it so i did create my own identity on how i dress and how i am how i should be but not who you a are. Lo- well, a, well, so that that's where I'm still working on. Like, okay, this is mm-hmm. definitely who I am, but a lot of things were be, were taught, like how yes. to. Uh, I don't like big crowds of people, but I was taught to be there. So, like, and you just behave. And as a child, I would always cover myself with my mom's skirt. I was always wondering about it. I was like, I was just scared for the doctor or I was just scared of other people. Now I know that I mean, I've been taught to step out in the open and to be who I am or who I was, mm. but to be um, outgoing, to be friendly, yeah, to be mm. extrovert. And I'm not a very big extrovert, to be honest. Not at all. A lot, yeah. a lot of people think so. Well, you know I me know. a little bit better. but Yeah. But, but if you would it's ask because- in general, people say, like, that's such an outgoing girl. Like, nope, I'm not. It's funny because, and the and the whole world of work is set up for extroverts, isn't it? And because yeah. before we, again, before you came on, you said, like, and, and and I think of you and I think of us, we're, we're at the bar, you know, we're drinking and carrying on. But both of us are stepping into our extroversion. And actually, because we're both highly sensitive, actually, the last thing we want to do is walk into that environment for too long. Like I can do it for a period of time. Yeah, and it's it's but also depending. Like, and also it's depending on what is the reason who? or who. I mean, who? if 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 we would go to one of our conferences where we 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 normally would meet and we would meet up with certain people, I would go. Two days in a row. I don't care if Absolutely. I just get to yeah. see them again or but when it's your tribe a, and you love them, it's very different energy, isn't it? Compared to exactly. that. Yeah. And it's it's also feeling like, is this energy okay for me right now? Or and yeah. of course I have my tricks. Nobody will notice at that point. But mm. still, what if they would notice? That's yeah. just me. I'm here because I'm the host of this thing. But now I'm going home. I put you in this bar. Have fun. See you tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going off to bed. <laughs> yeah. I always they always kill me. I think with um SourceCon is the one I really remember absolutely dying afterwards because I'd been full extrovert for like two and a half days or something. And I went Ooh, into yeah. a hotel room and I didn't come out for 24 hours. Oh well, I got food. But other than that, <laughs> I, I was food. just I was like, I don't want to talk to anyone, I don't want to see anyone. I'm just getting food. And other than that. I, d- I was exhausted. And yeah, that's that. But people do have that perception, isn't it? When you they see, particularly because they would see us around people that we know and love, and therefore we do. It's easier to be exactly. That. But that's also the nice trick, of course, because if you're with your friends and you're you're being there, and it's mm-hmm. went with SourceCon uh, last time in Amsterdam, it's my hometown. Same yeah. with with Sosu, it's my hometown. So I know exactly. the area. If I don't feel like it, I'll just go for a walk outside or have lunch somewhere exactly. else. So, mm. and yeah, I'm with a lot of friends. So people look up to you like they do know such so many people. Yeah, but mm. they come to me because I'm already there. Yeah. And then when we go abroad to other stuff, I always look up to people I love and who are my friends. And yeah. then Find them. it goes from there. But also, no, but you remember, well, you know this same as me if you go to a conference or you go to certain events where either you want to go or you have to go to you prepare at least i prepare i do my exercises mm-hmm. be in my zone yeah and yeah if if it if the vibe's good then i still have a lot of energy after two days if yeah. the vibe is a little bit like ooh, 
then I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, I must admit one of the big ones I learned, and actually I was telling you, we, we, we chatted a lot before we came, uh, we start hit record, we should have hit record earlier. Um, <laughs> but I was saying one of the ones I learned from Isabel Gatherer, who's also been a guest just recently, um, was the the white light and the golden light. Like yeah. If I don't clear my light, so I just have a shower and white lights, so I'm just clearing off everyone else's energy. And if I don't wrap up in that golden light before I go near anybody these days, I can really feel it. And I think it's interesting the more that you become energy aware. Uh, Elizabeth Peru calls it energy responsible, which I love. The oh, that's more you a become really good aware one. of that. Yeah, isn't it? The more you're like, I really do want to just energetically, because we're all energetic beings, even the scientists. But even, even if you that, look at so. the phrase, I'm cocooning, which yeah. obviously was be- because of, I think, the cocoon bats. But mm. what I do, if I'm a little bit out of touch, mm. I go, a lot of people go with a blanket on their couch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you do it in a certain way, it's like really, well, yeah, that also. But go in. You go in, yeah, yep. but it feels safe. I, I'm like, yeah. wh- how you do it with babies, like when they get born, mm-hmm. you, yeah. yeah it's, Sw- oh, swad- swaddle? Swaddle. Swaddle, yeah. Uh, Something like that. Well, yeah, no, I don't know either, but so that if thing. I do that. You wrap them up tightly. Yeah. So I wrap myself up really tightly. Yeah. And then within an hour, my energy levels go up. Yeah. So it's, it's really, so for me, that's so you're important. You're also going quiet. Oh, yeah, I can get well. really quiet. So how were you when you first got quiet and you went still? How are you with the internal dialogue? Because, we, you know, we do know that we have, uh, with our gifts, oh, so. we have a lot of internal <laughs> dialogue. So how were you the first? Because some people are really scared to get be still. And I, I, I can't think how many times this has come up on this podcast. So it's so funny that you're asking this right now because when I was young um, and we still lived in our first house, there was this little window mm. up in the in the wall yeah. and I would climb in there and make it and, and hung a, cu- a curtain outside. And I just f- was folding up in there and put some fairy tales on or music. I loved music already mm. by then. Yeah. But, and I would have hourly conversations with myself Mm -hmm. I would just talk to like or to the ducks outside I mean we were we were having a lot of animals I had a duck I had Mm -hmm. a crow I had another crow another duck Mm -hmm. and of course the dogs and cats and everything else but I would talk to everything which it's awesome (laughs) well my dog actually does sometimes but not not necessarily yeah yeah, Banjo's got language. very vocal at like 4 a.m. these days. But anyway. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> nice. You, you go, Badger. No, so it's, yeah. But no, no, so for me, um, of course, I you talk internally and then it's in your mind. But mm-hmm. I would have like, um, when I would cycle home from school, yeah, I'm Dutch. We cycle. Mm-hmm. We don't take buses or trains. We just cycle. It's terrifying when you're a tourist there. Like it's like, <laughs> like oh, oh my God, don't no, step out. Don't step honestly, out. Look, look especially, every way. <laughs> especially in Amsterdam. I mean, I need, seriously, tourists need to have licenses right now. Uh, because also for anyone who's living in England or Australia, the, it's the other side as well. So the, the wrong side, you mean? Or we're, no, we're on the right side. You're on. The other side. That's not even. <laughs> it's, it's very easy. But anyway, we've gone off topic. We've gone off topic. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, no, but it, it actually, um, for me, even even with studying, if I say mm-hmm. something out loud to myself, then it's real. Mm-hmm. It, it might sound really crazy, but for no. me, it absolutely works. So, if I would study uh, languages, and my mom always taught me, mm-hmm. like, if you hold your three fingers together and then you say it out loud, mm-hmm. then it stuck in your brain. It's how your brain sides work. How? How? I need to know how to do that because genuinely I'm trying to learn French and I just don't. Oh, just those fingers. Those fingers. And then focus on Do I have to hold them up like that or can I hold them anywhere? You can can hold them anywhere. (laughs) But no, it makes another connection between your left and right brain. God, that's amazing. I'm trying to learn French and I'm just hopeless at it. I should be learning something useful like that's in more countries like Spanish or something. But, yeah, anyway, I'm going to do that. French is. So yeah. interesting thing that you talk about this because I think, and, and I rant about this quite a lot, that people are getting misdiagnosed because they're admitting they have a rich internal dialogue. I've never once thought anything of my rich internal dialogue. In fact, I was just shocked to hear some people don't have one. And actually, I just love the fact you went in and you were having a conversation well, with yourself. I never- as long as the conversation is not destructive, 
I think it's yeah, quite normal. Yeah, I've never been saying Why to me, we... like, you're, 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 you're shite or you're not doing well. Uh, yeah, I can get really mad at myself if something doesn't work out how I want it to work out. But mm. That's just who I am. Um, but don't you go into the, so why didn't it work out? Don't you then start going through the analysis? Oh, yeah, because I'm like, oh, yeah, because I should have started earlier. And, but yeah, okay, this is how, how my, how I work. So that's, yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. And then it works out in the end because, but hey, why don't I start earlier? So, yeah, for me, for me, I would dialogue. never discuss that with a therapist, I guess, because for me, it's just normal. No, I just, I've just, exactly. But there are a lot of people who seem to be like, because you have a rich internal dialogue, your ADHD, here's a pill. And I'm just like, I have a really rich internal dialogue. Anyone well, listening to the podcast because, knows this. I have entire conversations but, in my head. But on the other hand, um, so for me, it's just so normal that I would never have brought it up through therapy. Good point. So maybe that people who were diagnosed that for them is a scary thing. For me, it's just something I do. Um, no, I love it. Because I would then go there. It. So, what, but it's so I would go from what on... you were saying before, I would then go into the whole, so why is it I always do everything last minute? I mean, I was quite regimented as a child. Has it got anything to do with that? Or I would literally just start having this very curious, kind conversation. It wasn't kind in the past. That's the joy of the work I've done. But that am I like that that's really interesting and just keep drilling I I'm working on different instance. aspects at the moment yeah. so that that but no so for instance it um it's like the funny thing is so so I I'm now having my second burnout I had a burnout 2009 mm -hmm. and um I was at at the hospital for a checkup which now I have every two years but I normally I go back every year to check up on the late effects of chemotherapy but i was sitting and this was a different doctor than i normally have and i was like yeah i'm so pissed off like how do i get a burnout i mean and everybody's like you a burnout i cannot imagine and she said like she started laughing and i was like why are you laughing this is absolutely not funny and it's like you do know that 75 percent of children who were diagnosed with cancer between the ages of zero and four got burned out. I was like, what? I said, the reason being because you were taught in your basis to go over your boundaries all the time to survive. So you're constantly yeah. in survival yeah. mode. Yeah. Since I know that you will now think like, how the hell did you get up in a new burnout? But no, that's because I, Oh, no, because you didn't learn at the first burnout. So the yeah, universe is exactly. giving you a second burnout. I didn't no, no. Oh, to, believe me. You I can have as many as you like. Myself. There's no judgment here. <laughs> no, so so I, I was so programmed to to not listen to my inner voice. Well, but no, no but, but in the, no, but the it's, first time you had the burnout, you didn't learn the lesson, which is no criticism of you whatsoever. No, but also so, what I didn't learn, I learned enough. I learned, mm. well, the boundary setting, I learned quite a bit, but it goes into the background gradually but yeah. also yeah at that point i fought to get better mm. so i would be able to work yeah. which is a different um ah, schematic yes. than what i'm doing now now i'm getting better to feel better and yeah. to choose what i want to do <gasps> with my life so it's a different <gasps> so getting different. better yes. it's so different it feels different as well but I got better for work as opposed to I'm getting better because for me, I want to feel better. Yeah. Wow. I've got goosebumps. But that's such a, it's, it's, it, it seems so small, different. but it's, it's a huge mindset. Huge. It's so huge. Because it was always about to fail. Work, you will never set your boundaries fully because you'll be like, well, it's, it's not impacting work, so I can let that boundary slip. Exactly. But it's impacting work. Exactly. I'm not letting that boundary slip. But when it's for your life and what you want to do and how you want, you will, those boundaries will be firm. Yeah. So now it was a whole situation. So we had COVID. Oh. My dad, my dad I'm was sorry, diagnosed. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. I'm like, no, yeah, no, but now it's like, yeah. My dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer, um, very aggressive form. I was working abroad. My brothers didn't want to help out that much. So I had to do everything. At least that's how I felt. Plus my work. Plus, oh, I have a family to run. 
oh, and someone else's family to run actually as well. Mm. So with work, I was, I came back from Abu Dhabi and I was like, the next six months, I'm taking it easy because I feel I'm slipping up. Never thought, my body never thought of the non-work related stress. Which is enormous. And there was no, there were no boundaries in place. There was no respect coming towards you. You know, your brothers weren't stepping up. All that, it's like boundary, slip, boundary, boundary. It's exactly. And, and, and because as a it was- child, you'd been taught to be a girl, which usually means people please, which means help everybody, which means your priorities go out the window and we can't work like that. We burn out. Exactly. exactly. Uh, so, oh, I'm so glad you've got this time now to fix it. Yeah. And, and also it's so much because fun my, my, my with people, they just love it, don't they? Yeah, no. But what I what I what I messaged you earlier as well is that yeah. for everyone who is doubtful about therapy or whatever, just mm. try different things which which you feel happy with. I mean, I I my mom being a, a therapist, mm. you don't want to know how many therapies I've tried. I did aura healing. I did with brushes. Uh, was that aura well, healing? Aura Your aura? Healing. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. When I was 11. So I started really young with that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, but, I was saying white light. It's the same thing, isn't it? Clear aura. Exactly. No, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's. So if, if, if people hear EMDR, then they always think of the, 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 the beeps. And I'm like, the beeps? I've never had it with beeps. I thought it was so eye had, movement. Yeah. So there's so many different. And I was oh. with a lady and she was, um, amazing and then she's she stopped because it was too heavy because she was doing actually more than just the tapping mm. and then i could stay and i was like yeah because i only went oh, to her sorry, are year. you talking this one no no on the knees she did on the knees oh okay because that's eft isn't it i love that but she I, but yeah no but she was she, she would definitely take all the tension out of your body she would drag it out of you it was so mm-hmm. intense and we loved and working was, with each other. And she wasn't letting go of it. Sounds like she was keeping it. Uh, well, she was really good. But when you mm-hmm. when you've done it for thirty years, you're you're done. Yeah, you're done. So but I wonder she, if she wasn't energetically because I say this to my chiropractor a lot when he's like, "Touch, are, are you, do you energetically protect with all these people that you touch?" She was yeah, taking absolutely. the energy out of you. Was she releasing it? I wonder. That's, yeah, that's, why I'm, that's, why I, that's why I that's why I why I don't treat people anymore. So I can do well the basic treatment my mom does, I can do mm. exactly the same. Yeah. I used to do it when I was younger and I would get so sick. I would have what do, headaches. What's she doing? And, what's your mom do? Oh, she, so she she does body work. So well she because she did so many different kinds of things, she has her own therapy. So it's yeah. It could be hypnotherapy. It's just what your body's asking for. What you need. So it starts, it starts at, she started with touch for health. So it's acupressure. It's your body actually answers the questions. Yeah. So when so someone has a headache. You're doing you know, that. Oh, sorry. I just mean to interrupt again. No. <laughs> if you're doing that and you're touching people, no wonder that you yeah. found it a bit much. No, yeah. but especially with me being high sensitive, it's, mm-hmm. it's not smart to do. But I would, even if I do want to help out like one of the boys or something, I would wash my hands up to over my yeah. elbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I'm getting like Yeah, freaky. I don't want your stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I think I also love the, the, the message that you've given, which we've had a few times through this, which is good, that keep trying. Like, you know, I've written out 12 years of completely different things that I've done. It's like I think sometimes people go to one coach or one therapist and they think, well, that's I, – I, no, it's like, but you might plateau. Yeah, I'm, I'm working It might with... be right or they're not getting through, like, your defences or whatever. Yeah, there might be a reason. Yeah, so so when I had my first burnout and it was I – w- I was in a real bad place. I weighed 40 kilos, uh, yeah. not even, I think, 45. Yeah, 45. So, so they said, like, you need to go through therapist today, otherwise we will admit you some more. I was like, oh, my gosh. There's nothing going on. So I went to see a psychologist and after the third session, I was like, dude, what are we doing here? Look, you make money like water. And I'm telling you the story I've been telling for the past 31 years, Mm. 41 years, I have to say, (laughs) getting a bit old. I'm like, you're not helping me and I'm not helping you. Yeah. 
okay, money wise. So I was like, this is not working. And then I changed to uh, autonomy, autonomy mm-hmm. which is more body and mind work, which for yeah. me works. Exactly. Not necessarily for everyone, but so I changed it. And now I'm working with a guy here in my village, which is a minute walk, which is awesome. no pressure. So, oh, mm-hmm. I have to go through therapy. Oh, I have to go by car. Mm-hmm. And I'm working with a psychologist for yeah. uh, the stress in my brain. Yeah. So it's on two sides. And amazing. It's, it's almost the same kind of training I'm doing. Yeah. But one is for my body to heal, and the one is for my brain to get more mm. easy going on myself, yeah. and to have less stress in my brain, yeah. so that I can function better. Mm. But it's it's it's, it's so nice to have, and I don't have to go there. We do it digitally. Yeah, it's like I know. I, yeah, I used to work remote anyway. So why would I have to wait an, a year and a half for a diagnosis if I can do it? Oh video it is amazing though like you know I used to go and see Michelle like Michelle Zelly was my first yeah and and I went to which is you know when I look at some of the stuff we did which is good but it can be done remotely there's no reason that it can't be and it's just it's opened up such accessibility and again it's depending on who you are and what you want to get out of it I am used to I did 15 conferences in, in two years of COVID. I did mm-hmm. uh, a year yes, of training right. with you Yeah, where with all these things, we needed to open up ourselves. So yeah. for su- some people it's like, it's digital. I can't, I fully understand that's not everybody's mm. cup of tea, mm. but for me, it's actually kind of safe. Yeah. I get my point. I'm wondering if the introverted HSPs really like it. Because actually, we don't have to go through the stress of getting somewhere, and then when we're all open or, and vulnerable, yeah, and we don't have to go home on the train, <laughs> which is exactly, what I used to have to do. And exactly. sometimes I'd be like still crying, <laughs> which is fine. Well, and I and I can but sit how I want to sit. So now I'm actually my knee is right under mm-hmm. so my knee is like right here. So it's and it's in your home yeah. where you're safe, and especially yeah. with with. Uh, the psychologist about the ASS where it's mm. it's kind of scary to learn something new about yourself even though if it's mm. autism or uh, uh, clairvoyant or mm. whatever name it is but I'm learning Clair about audience. myself and um, <laughs> but it's it's, it's, it's it's funny that because what you're saying is absolutely true because you're you're showing yourself so you're completely open if yeah. I would go out right after my therapy to go mm. shopping here in the village even i'm mm. like why so i'm not doing yeah. that because yeah yeah all the tension from other people and i can see like oh he's pissed off oh no don't want to yeah. meet them and so i'm taking a few hours just to sit mm. in my house or go for a walk with the dog okay. and yeah. then it then it embeds in your body more that mm. i mean my therapy needs to embed and then it works You've so just take a few described, hours. You've just described a HSP so beautifully, which is we can literally see almost like the vibration of other people. Like you can see who's whose mood they're in. It's quite yeah. amazing. Um, if because we're out of time, <laughs> we I'm always run out of time. <laughs> like, what? If people want to get in contact with you to hear more, to discuss more, where would you prefer I sent people? Um, LinkedIn. Ooh. LinkedIn is fine. Uh, they can also email me at kim at the lockenbergs.com. I love your email. It's so cool. <laughs> I love your company name. And, 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 and still with my tattoo, matching tattoos. Yeah, okay. Aww. That's so good, isn't it? Thank yeah. you for that. That was absolutely Thank you. Thank you. amazing. I just, I, I just, yeah. To me, I know you're, you're saying you're in burnout, but you actually seem so much more centered. So I think you're just heading in the most yeah, incredible yeah, path. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting there, mm. but it's, yeah, a, we still have a long way to go. It's but a I'm feeling a lot better. Process, process. yeah. My I, mom, I, my mom is still in process. Yeah, I mean, I've had a twelve year process, and I definitely have got to that self mastery point. But I still have stuff bubble up. I still have things pop up. Exactly. Oh. But you learn to deal with them quicker, and that's exactly. Joy. So anyway, thank you again. Thank you.
Thank you for tuning in to Beyond the Damage of Words. How brave, how vulnerable. All to inspire listeners like you to take a step or inspire others to take a step. Imagine what healing we could create if we normalize this conversation. So please pass this on and of course subscribe so we can do just that. Until next time, thank you.